Okay, since I have basically all the scenery done on the layout, uh, except for a few things, it's time now to move on adding some water to this creek area here, uh, which I have running along the front edge of the layout. Now, generally speaking, if you're gonna do a water feature of any kind, that's one of the last things you're gonna to wanna to do in terms of finishing it on your layout because you don't wanna end up having glue and different things, you know, paints or whatever, like run onto your water surface that you just put in place. And so uh, I am to the point now where basically everything is done and I can work on this little water feature here in the front. So what I'll be doing is using a two-part epoxy. This is Envirotex. Um, and I like using this for a lot of water features. It has a nice, you know, richness to it and, and reflectivity. Um, it looks very shiny. You, you get a lot of depth very easily because you can pour a pretty thick layer. And so I do like to use this uh, for a lot of features. So anyway, this Envirotex product is a two-part epoxy. You have you have to mix these in equal parts exactly, at least very, very closely, if you wanna get a product that's going to harden nicely for you. If you don't mix them equally, you're gonna have either a scenario where you can get some cracking, or if you have a little bit too much hardener, um, or if you don't have enough hardener, it may, it may stay a little bit tacky if you're lacking in the hardener, and, uh, and that's kind of a mess. Um, so you really do need to be close to perfectly even with these. The bigger a pour you do, the far easier that is. Uh, in this case, I have a very small creek. And so because of that, I only can pour in a small amount the first couple times. I'm probably gonna have to do two or three coats here of this to kind of build it up to where I have the entire creek, uh, you know, with water in it um, and not have one end that has, you know, more than like a quarter inch at one time because that's gonna impact how it, how it dries and, and how it hardens. Um, and so what I like to do is these are the little measuring cups you get like on the children's Tylenol or whatever, something like that. But a little measuring cup like this works really nicely when you're using um, a small amount of a two-part resin epoxy. And I'll actually just be using some of these little applesauce cups um, to mix it in. Um, these are really nice to save and use if you have these. And so I'll be mixing up the epoxy in here uh, and then doing the little pours one at a time. I'll do the resin first in terms of measuring that out and then do an equal part of the hardener. Okay, so I poured out two teaspoons of the resin, so we'll pour that in here. And I already forgot, I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on because you don't really wanna get this all over your hands, it does become kind of a mess. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the cup here and kind of clean it out with a paper towel. Okay, now I'm going to do my hardener of equal amounts. We're going to mix this up good. Now when you mix your resin, you are going to get lots of these bubbles in there. And when you pour it, those bubbles are going to be there. And you do need to try to get those out. And you can pop them by exhaling on it um, or just running a flame over it, um, being very careful you don't set anything on fire. Try to go ahead and pour this in here as carefully as I can. And while the Envirotex looks very thick, this stuff is surprisingly uh, runny. And so if you have any little holes in your scenery, it will find them and run through it. Uh, you wouldn't think this would go through, you know, a very small hole, but it will very easily. Um, and it will run quite readily. Um, and so this will basically find its own level and you know, you'll get a very, very level surface once all is said and done. And it's hard to say, but if you do, just blowing on this does remove most of the bubbles pretty easily. Okay, so at this point, pretty much it's just a matter of coming back um, periodically uh, trying to remove the bubbles as you can sort of see them come to the surface. And most of the bubbles are gonna come up within the first half hour, um, if not sooner. And then after that point, you should be pretty well set with not having too many more bubbles come up that might harden into your surface. Okay, so it's been a day. The first layer of resin has hardened. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a second batch of about the same size. And once again, we'll just pour this here along the creek bed area. And we'll just 
just let it find its own level here. And that'll be the final layer of resin I'm gonna put in here. And then after this is dried tomorrow, I can come in and touch up the bank areas, probably put in, put in some more clumps of uh, the static grass, and then that will be pretty much wrapped up. I'm just going to continue running grass tufts along the edge here to hide the areas where the resin kind of crept up the side of the bank. Okay, so you can see here how those grass tufts really kind of help mask the edges there where the resin crept up a little bit on the sides of the bank. And so on this far side here where the drain pipe comes out, I'm going to use some Woodland Scenics water effects to uh, basically create a little bit of water coming out of this pipe if I can. And I'm just going to use a little Q-tip and kind of tease that around in there a little bit. And then it'll dry clear um, and it'll look just kind of like water pouring out of that drain pipe there. Here you can see the completed creek. You can see the water there spilling out of the drain pipe and then the completed creek section here. You can kind of see there what that looks like. So anyway, that's pretty much a wrap on building all the structures and details for this layout. So you can kind of see here what all the scenery and details look like on the layout. And besides a few little last minute things and some touch-ups, got to touch up the backdrop there in terms of the blue skyline there. And I'm also working on building a forklift kit here. So I'll be adding that to this area here as well. But for the most part, everything is just about wrapped up. So in the next video here, I'll be showing you how I set up the operations for the switching layout, um, how I set up the car card racks and how I'm actually gonna do the operations and go through a little sample operating session. And then I'll have a video after that on weathering some of these box cars and uh, the locomotive as well. And that'll be pretty much a wrap on this switching layout. So anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching, bye.